from a few minutes ago. I called Russell Simmons. Um, and Russell Simmons said, my brother, Run, says that this is the best rapper on the planet. Back then, that's what Run said about you. Right. Why I pursued it, I found James. Breaker, man. I, you know, it feels good. I, this year, tour, you know, this, this actually is the 30th anniversary of uh, Def Jam Records. We just, when we founded the, the label, Russell Simmons, Rick Rubin, and myself, this is actually the 50th year. And um, I think it's been an amazing journey. A lot of great artists. Mm -hmm. um, not just my, only myself and Public Enemy and, and, and Slick Rick and the BC Boys and Red Man and Method Man and all of those artists, but then you have you know, the Kanye West and, and, wow. and Jay-Z and the Rihannas and, and um, you know, Frank Ocean and, you know, Rick Ross and Young Jeezy and all these young, all these artists that actually we were able to give a platform to. So it's, um, it's really an amazing feeling to, to, you know, look back on that. But I, at the same time, got to keep it moving, got to keep looking forward. Yeah. So if you were able to step out of your body and evaluate what Run said to Russell, that you were the best rapper on the planet, what does that mean? What makes the best rapper? I, what makes the best rapper is a fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 The, fan, the fans determine that because, you know, you know, as much as they try to make it like sports, it, it, it isn't. You know, it's not really just a numbers game with, with music. Music is subjective. It's art. It's not, you can't just, it's not like a scoreboard. You can't just base it on chart positions or number one albums or, you know, how many hits did this guy have. It's really about the fans and how the fans feel about you and how your music touches people's lives personally. Because there are songs that I've had that did nothing on the charts but have touched people's lives personally and, and affected the way they live in their homes. And so that's re it's really ultimately about the fans. It's about the people who love you and the people who support you. That's what makes you the GOAT. That's what makes you great. Not necessarily your skill because no one is that good and everyone's not going to appreciate you no matter how good you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, so, so when you... Yes. Um, Amen, man. Obviously, we all refer to you as the GOAT, the greatest of all times. What's good now? What do you listen to? What is good rap right now? I think there's a lot of good, a lot of good music out there. I think there are a lot of artists that are that are really doing well. I just did a remix with um, with a great young artist, Kid Ink, and um, me, Kid Ink, Chris Brown, and uh, Tiger. And you know, they remind me of me when I first started. You know, so I was happy to, you know, get on their song, get on their on the record, and, and do something. And that, and that remix um, is called Main Chick, and that was a lot of fun. But I mean, there are a lot of great artists out there. You you look at people like Schoolboy Q and you know, some of the things that Kendrick Lamar's doing, um, you know, they're good. I mean, Kanye West when he's not complaining. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Stop, stop complaining, you, dog. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Um, there, there have been things that you've done with yeah, music. You're going to tear me up, man. Uh, <laughs> we'll call him during the commercial. Yeah, call him up. Uh, um, don't hit me. <laughs> and God, please don't run into another sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there for that one. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, you changed the game with some of the chances you took. Because I know when you did I Need Love, it wasn't necessarily something that everybody thought was a good idea. No, it wasn't because, you know, you know, at the end of the day, rap music is a male oriented and male dominated field and the majority of, you know, guys wanna hear hard records, period like point blank they like my hard records they're not necessarily the biggest fans of my love songs mm -hmm. but that was something that i was feeling so i was willing to go out there and pioneer that and 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 pave the way and now you have artists like you know drake and a lot of it, for the most part it's very difficult for an, for an artist nowadays to have an album without including you know ballads they're expected to have that they're just not to expect expected to od on it like me right. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. No, I <laughs> but i just that's what i like i mean i grew up you know, I, I, you know, listening to Rick James and, you know, and Prince, and, but especially Rick James, like, I just like, I love that freaky music. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, the, that's what I like to do. Yeah. I like freaky songs. Um, you know? uh, my keyboard player, Victoria, was breaking it down to me. Uh, I was saying, what makes this work? And what was that? And she started running down Yamaha DX7 to me. You remember? I, I remember, I remember you, you talking about like a song like I Need Love or something. Yeah. But see, you know, to me, 
you know, everybody has a different formula, so every artist you sit on this couch would tell you something different about music. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not really about, like, some rappers, they want to write literature, mm -hmm. they want to write, you know, epic poems, right? They want to write, you know, War and Peace, yeah. you know, they Tolstoy on them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some people, they just say whatever. Me, I just, I, I just want it to feel good. That's it. Yeah. Like, if it feels good, we good. Like, I don't know what else we're talking about. Like, don't concern yourself with whether or not, you know, I said the, the, the slickest analogy or metaphor just, or simile, just, or, or whether my couplet, it, it wasn't about the couplets, it's just about how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so oh, okay, so check this out. Check this out. Victoria, like, we're in the studio late at night. Show me what you feel when the Yamaha DX7 kicks into I Need Love. That's crazy. When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall, and in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call, telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dove. For the first time in my life, I see I need love. There I was. Giggling about the games that I had played with many hearts And I'm not saying no names Then the thought occurred, tear drops me, my eyes blurred So I said to myself, look what you done to her mm. I can feel it inside, I can't explain how it feels All I know is that I never dish another broad jail Playing make-believe, pretending that I'm true Holding in my laugh as I say oh. <laughs> yes. But I'm gonna have to take a closer look at those fancy jeans. Man, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your jeans, they fit so good. I cut them at Old Navy, 19 bucks. Larry, these jeans are only 19 bucks at Old Navy! <gasps> those jeans are only $19? And kids' jeans are $12. Wow! NCIS Los Angeles, and you know, there are some people out there, you know, who may not have checked the show out, you should definitely check it out, it's a lot of fun, we have a lot of good times on there, a lot of action, it's crazy, a little comedy, a little wit, a little humor, and that episode there, we actually went down in Mexico undercover to like, get in, infiltrate this cartel, it's crazy, the things we're doing, it's just amazing, it's fun. Did you ever expect, as an actor, to play a cop on television? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Get in with him, baby. <laughs> no, I really didn't. I really didn't. But you know, um, it, it's all about expansion, right? And it's all about evolution and evolving. And uh, you can't let your past hold your future hostage. You know, so you gotta you gotta be willing to step out there and take take your life to the next level. And a lot of times, going to the next level involves moving out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have to, you know, to do some to, to achieve something you've never achieved before, you're gonna have to do some things you've never done. Yeah. You know? That's a good point, so. Um I always felt as I watched your life grow, I always felt that the one thing you did plan, the one thing you had in your heart, was a woman you shouted out on my show on Fox way back. Mm -hmm. You said her name. I was trying to jam you up. I was, you know, I was being silly and then, yeah, she was, say who you love. Or, shout, uh, yeah, shout out yeah. your girl. And you said Simone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said Simone then, yeah. bro. Yeah, you know, because, you know, you gotta do that, you know. You gotta go home, really. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Shut <laughs> my ah! You know, I ain't trying to... But isn't it wonderful that this man, 26 years later, that's... The love of your life, the wind beneath your wings? Look, you know, and, and she knows this, look, over those 26 years, I absolutely was not perfect, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, I think it's a man's responsibility to take care of his family regardless. Mm -hmm. So, that's, you know, that's, you know, to me, that's ultimately important in the set, set an example for my children, the best example that I can, and encourage them to dig deep inside of themselves and go after their dreams and try to, you know, strive to become what it is that they want to become inside of them, not live in my shadow, mm -hmm. not try to be the next coming of me, mm -hmm. like, you know, but to be themselves. Yeah, and, and, you, and to be great at that. They're college age now? Two of them are, two, well, three of them. And then one is, one is uh, 13, yeah. Oh, there's a, yeah, that's a, that's an old picture, yeah, yeah. They, 
they even more on the floor now. They tear my pockets up. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> like every other dad in America. Yeah, you but know? you love and your mom. Girl. Of course. Of course. I mean, what man wouldn't? But, you know, nah, I, I want to... Nah, no, nah. no. I was about to say. Yeah. No, what I was about to say is what man wouldn't. You know? Ooh. Um, you know. Ooh. Where to hit that word? You know what I mean? Um, you know, I wake up early and do morning radio around the country talking to my different markets. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people in Florida this morning mm -hmm. had been talking about LeBron's Mount Rushmore and putting four athletes in that position. And one, I, I have to give him credit, one of the radio personalities said, hey, see what LL would create with a hip-hop Mount Rushmore. Wow. Let's start with your face up there, and what other three? Um, you know, they, when they were talking music, people were saying it should be McCartney and Lennon up there. Yeah, I understand. It's different generations, though. You know, every generation is going to have these different, these different people. You know what I'm saying? And I say this with all due respect. Just because you made a lot of money doing something doesn't mean that you're more significant in terms of what your art has given to the world. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when I look at someone like, you know, Flash and, and the Treacherous Three and, and the Crash Crew and all of those guys, I mean, that's those are the people that are Mount Rushmore to me because they really built this and really launched this and really made this thing possible. You know, we took the ball and ran with it and then we built Def Jam and then, you know, all of the artists that came after me were on Def Jam and, you know, ran with it and, 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 and you know, told the story the way they wanted it to be told. But the reality, truth be told, is you got to go to Flash and them. Yeah. You know, you gotta. That's great, sir. That's true. Um, I know you and I both miss Michael Jackson. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he often gave you great advice. Do you remember, what was the best piece of advice Mike gave you? Uh, he gave me two things. One was um, never limit yourself, which mm. is simple, but a lot of people do it. And the other one was, you know, if they, if, if they can whistle. If they can whistle the song, it doesn't matter if they speak the language, LL. Wow. And I'll tell you another Universal. story. Universal. I'll tell you another story. So one day, you know, we was in the studio, so I'm in the studio with Mike, right? And so he's, I'm, I was at, he was at the piano, and, no, I was at the piano, and he was sitting up on the piano, like, like sitting up on the piano, right? So I'm talking to him, right? Mm -hmm. And so he, I said, Mike, so in that smooth criminal video, how did you, um, how did you guys, uh, like lean all the way forward like that, right? And he told me, he said, well, we brought in this, 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 this Indian um, shaman and they did this whole ceremony and they had incense and smoke blowing and I was like, really? And he was like, no, silly. Ah! <laughs> yo, yo, Mike was hilarious. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> yes. yo, I got some crazy stories with Mike. Mike is funny. He had a great Believe me. Yo, yo. I mean, we was in the studio, he came to the studio. <laughs> he said, oh, sorry, there was traffic. And I'm just sitting there like, Mike had traffic? Like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there was traffic. It's Mike. Yo, Mike was ill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mike was ill. I, I miss him. Um, you won't have to miss LL because he's going to stick around for a while. As a matter of fact, we're going to play Where You Going in a moment. We'll be back. Yes, yeah, Straight Talk has nationwide 4G LTE coverage on one of America's largest and most dependable networks. You. Classes are starting soon. Empire Beauty School. Make this switch during the President's Day sales event at your Ford dealer and discover why we're America's favorite brand. Now get 0% financing for 60 months plus get up to 2,000 cash back only through February 28th at your local Ford dealer. I'll give you a question to ponder. You ever walk down the street and see one, see, see somebody, and you say, uh, where is he going? <laughs> okay, so we sent one of our producer writers out on the streets of Los Angeles to ask people, where are you going? And uh, LL is going to play this game for someone in the audience. I think, uh, where is she? Stand up. Who in the audience are we playing for? Karen? Is that, yeah, there you are. Hi, Karen. That's Hi. Karen. Right, let's try to figure out where you're going. Yes. Do you uh, trust LL? I do. Okay. I trust you too. I think. <laughs> All right, here we go. Everyone he gets right, 
you win fifty dollars. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's our first round of where you going? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's your name? My name is Steamy. Nice to meet you. What would you do during the weekend? A uh, typical weekend would be get my kids, feed them like 30 times in one day, and then take them out of the house to get them tired, and then I come home and pass out, and then I watch Breaking Bad. You like going to movies? I love movies. What's the last movie you saw? I saw the Lego movie. Oh! Steamy, I need to know. Steamy, where you going? <laughs> wow. Okay, that's Steamy. Okay. And it's 3.56 in the afternoon. God, if she was from the ghetto, she'd be stymie. But I guess it's stymie. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me give you some choices. <laughs> let me give you some choices. Not stymie. Is stymie going to a Taekwondo mm. studio? Is stymie going to a Chuck E. Mm. Cheese? Mm -hmm. Or is stymie going to therapy? Mm. <laughs> therapy session, yes. Okay, L, you can talk to our friend in the audience where, where, here. Where, where, do you, where do you, where do you think, Karen? Where do you think? Oh. I don't know, with all, the, with all the chaos in her life, I think she needs therapy. What do you guys think? <laughs> Where's she going? I see three, a lot of people saying three. Okay, one, okay, 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 okay. One, two, okay, two, two, okay. two, two. Taekwondo? Yeah. Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah. Therapy session? Yeah. Chuck You're going with Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> Are you with that, Karen? Are you good with that? You okay with it? I trust you. Oh, here we go. Stamey, where are you going? I am going to Taekwondo. <laughs> I feel so bad. No, okay. No, but, but no. you know, you never know. We got two more. All right, we, we got, got to get her some money. Yes, I, I will take bad. care of you. Come on. No matter what happens, I'm gonna take care of you. I got him. I got this. I okay. So uh, here goes. The... <laughs> Here's the next one. Be rolling. Hey, what's your name? Mike. Where are you from, Mike? Nevada, Zephyr Cove, Nevada. Oh wow. How long have you been in LA? Uh, four years. I'm okay. Caregiver. Do you have any hobbies? Um, yes, collecting rocks out in the desert. What about books? Are you a reader? Yeah, I'm reading The Conspiracy of the Knaves right now. It's an old Civil War book. Mike, I gotta find out. Where you going, Mike? Okay, so it's 9.37 in the morning. Okay. Is Mike going to a parole hearing? Mm -hmm. Is Mike hungry? Maybe headed to a sizzler? Mm -hmm. Or is Mike going to a liquor store in the morning? Mm -hmm. Those are the three choices. Oh, uh oh, they're all the race. Karen, LL, what are you two? I, I'm, you know what? I'm going with you on this one. You, you tell I me. Think he, oh, 9:30 in the morning. Yeah, 9:30 in the morning. Yeah. He might be going. He might be going to the liquor store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're going with liquor <laughs> store or <laughs> parole <laughs> hearing I and Sizzler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you guys think? Karen that loses money, so we should probably trust oh. Karen. So you think it's going you think it's going to parole? I'm thinking parole hearing or liquor store. Well liquor store. <laughs> All right. Okay. Karen, would you like to go with the it's majority? A liquor, wait a minute, is the liquor okay. store open at 937 in the morning? <laughs> how do you all feel that? <laughs> okay, Mike, where are you going? I'm going into the liquor store. <laughs> We have one more B. Roller. Hey, what's your name? Mm -hmm. My name's Robert. Hey, where are you from, Robert? Originally from Texas. Do you have any hobbies? My hobby uh, is uh, my work. Okay, what do you do for a living? I'm a uh, barber. Oh, that's fantastic. Do you cook? I used to be a chef. Robert, I gotta know. I gotta know. Robert, where you going? <laughs> okay, <Where's> Robert going? <laughs> that's Robert. It's 12.47 in the afternoon. Is he going? to get that tattoo removed. A tattoo removal shop. Is he going to a sex shop? Or is he going to play miniature golf? 
Putt, putt. Three choices, Karen and LL. It's our last. Oh, no, where's he going? Where's he going? Sex shop. You said he's going to sex shop? Going to sex shop. <laughs> You're convinced right there. Karen looked like she recognized the Ivy behind her. I, I think I... <laughs> Okay, 12.47 p.m. Robert, what are you doing? doing? I am going to the sex shop and <laughs> I get to keep this one. I want to remind them that NCIS Los Angeles airs Tuesday nights at 9 on CBS. Yeah. And one other thing, one other quick thing. I, I did this for Magic. I want to do it for you. Your wife has a wonderful company that she runs. Yeah, she has a jewelry line called Simone I. Smith Jewelry. And uh, a portion of all the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. So you should, you should check it out. It'd be great. Cool. Really good. Really good. I'd like you to thank... LL, I'll be back with Jesse Williams. All right. Here in Philadelphia, you can access a Philly cheesesteak anytime, day or night. Just like you can access Geico anytime, day or night. There's only one way to celebrate this unique.